what Zephyr Pro adds to the feature set of the uh, original Razer Zephyr is voice amplification. That's actually achieved through those speakers and that microphone. Uh, so you can see here, the only real changes are those as well as an additional button on the side uh, that's, that complements the other button. So I'll turn on the RGB for the mask as a whole, and then I'll turn on the voice amplification. Uh, you can customize the individual uh, RGB interface uh, through, the, through the app as well as uh, we're, we have something that we're demoing on the show floor, I can't demo it right now. We actually have voice modification uh, oh. that we're developing in parallel with the actual uh, hardware design of the Zephyr Pro product. Very cool, I, I, I like how it looks. It's, yeah, it's very futuristic cyberpunk kind of vibe. Yeah, so there, there's great things about it, um, both uh, from a product ID perspective, um, around being able to have that that really iconic razor look to it. I like that it won't cover my beard. It's on your. It's right on the bottom right. of your mouth, right? Exactly. Okay. So when you when you try to wear it the first time, like everyone's first impulse is to wear it down here, okay. uh, which it, it doesn't fit. It actually uh, fits right uh, above your chin. So what's the strap on the back? Is that just like a drawstring and you yeah, you it's kinda a drawstring with a with a little uh, a little safety pole right there. So basically, uh, because it has a little bit of weight to it, uh, the thing that we needed to do was achieve how does it stay on your face without uh, ripping your ears off. <laughs> because I mean, even with the cloth, uh, cloth mask that you have right there, sure, uh, it pulls on your ears. Uh, the original prototype of uh, Project Hazel was, uh, was had ear loops. That design just simply doesn't work. That's why we had a fallback option of creating these head straps. So it's supported uh, in two places, the top of your head as well as the back of your neck mm -hmm. to evenly distribute the weight. And then on the front, there's a soft silicone seal so that it actually achieves a nice seal around your nose and mouth. Uh, one of the issues is with a really nice seal around your nose and mouth, um, it actually muffles your voice a little bit. So that's where the voice amplification comes right. in. Right. And can I ask you about the ventilation mm -hmm. within the mask? Is it actively circulating air it or is. in your face? Yeah, so there's two fans right here. Uh, these are both inhalation valves. This is the exhalation valve. Uh, so there, you can run the fans at two different speeds. It's almost over-engineered to an extent of uh, providing more airflow than you actually need. And, and it, it doesn't fog up the inside at all. It prevents that because it uh, creates almost an equilibrium with the outside. Since it has that seal, the susceptibility to fogging up is, is higher. So creating that additional airflow is going to create a better equilibrium with the outside. Can you comment on battery life? Like what's the battery life of like, does it depend on the fan with the lighting and yeah, everything? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it, it has a varying range, obviously, uh, with any lithium, lithium ion batteries. With RGB on and low uh, low fan intake, which is what most people are gonna run most of the time, unless they're doing a high, high strain and high demand activity, uh, you're looking at like six to eight hours of battery life. Uh, with voice amplification on, it's gonna drain a little bit further, but uh, voice amplification is meant to be turned on and off, whether you're using it, you're not gonna be you're not going to have it on when you're not talking because then people you're just amplifying your breathing <laughs> uh, awesome i think that covers it yeah no worries thank you so much of course appreciate it